Oh, I mean, you have a grocery? Or do you we're, mail out uh, yeah, food? Yeah, we're more of a distributorship because they won't let us grow hemp in this country. So it's all got to be done in Canada. So You mean hemp is illegal totally? I mean, not marijuana, but hemp. Oh, yeah. The, the government mistakenly and for, you know, subterfuge says that hemp is marijuana. The DEA has just put out a fact sheet on that very issue. And... Uh, that lie has been perpetrated for over 65 years. When Congress passed the law in 1937 to regulate the production of marijuana, it was very careful to separate out the legitimate hemp products from the scope of that law, but 30 years. So as of right now, hemp is totally illegal? Yeah. Uh, hemp is illegal to grow without a license. The Drug Enforcement Administration maintains that it has the responsibility to issue these licenses, but they won't do it. Nobody has gotten one yet. Why not? Well, among other reasons, they want 10-foot high fences with 2-foot angle bars. They want um, a armed guard protocol. They want 24-hour supervision and guard towers and motion detectors and lights and are uh, safe to keep the seeds and all these requirements that meet you know stringent DEA regulations of what a drug company would have to have inside of a you know a building where pharmaceuticals were manufactured the regulations are not well adapted to growing plants but the DEA is using these drug manufacturing regulations to keep anybody from getting a license uh, finally one pushy state representative from Hawaii was able to actually get one of these licenses but she had the power of the government of Hawaii behind her and senators and congressmen and they made them do it inside this 10-foot fence and with, amounted to a tennis court size piece of property and no real legitimate hemp research can take place under those kinds of conditions uh -huh. and the shame of it is is that hemp is not a substance that can't be uh, abused there's no way to take industrial hemp that we would want to grow in Kentucky and turn it into a substance that anybody could use as a drug. And our point with the Drug Enforcement Administration is hemp is not marijuana. Every other country in the world is able to distinguish hemp from marijuana. Canada, Is, Europe, hemp, is hemp legal in other countries besides every Canada? Other place but here you can grow hemp. Every country every in Europe, country every country except in the Asia. United States? Every country in Europe and every country Russia? in Asia. Russia? Oh, China? Yeah. China has a huge the communists? history of... Oh, yes, see, actually... How about... Hemp, can Saddam grow, grow hemp, the too? The hemp industry survived because the communist countries didn't ban it like they did in the United States. And they exist as legitimate industries in places like Romania, Poland, China, and Russia, where... They were encouraged, uh, and so the hemp products that I'm wearing here, this is Romanian hemp from mills that were built to supply the communists. Uh, th this is uh, Romanian also, actually. Usually it's something else. But, but all the hemp is grown and processed in regions that the communists allowed to continue, where we totally wiped it out anywhere in the Western world. Don, would you talk for a few minutes about the historical uh, economic... Uh ramifications of, of uh, hemp over the years uh, wasn't it used in the military and or in the Navy for uh, canvas for sales well like at the time of settling this country you know the cordage industry was the big industry everything needed cordage the farmers needed cordage the city people needed cordage the ships needed cordage the whole commerce ran on cordage you think about how much rope it took to do about anything you know, hook up a stagecoach or sail a boat, uh, all the rope sails and oakum for the boats. So the hemp industry was huge for about a hundred and some years. It began to be replaced when the cotton gin made cotton easier and cheaper to process and that affected all kinds of economic changes. When they finally figured out how to process hemp in the early part of this century, the industrialists were so concerned that hemp would wreck the same kind of economic changes that cotton did that they uh, all band together to get rid of hemp and created the reefer madness campaign of the 30s that made everybody scared of this foreign invader named marijuana 
and few people realized that it was industrial hemp that was really and the what subject would, of this And what was industrial hemp threatening? What specific uh, industries? Uh, well, the wood forest products industries, they were learning how to make hemp out of vegetable matter at the time. I'm so sorry, they were learning to make paper out of vegetable matter at the time. And then so they William Randolph Hearst had, because of his newspapers, he owned uh, a lot of uh, forests? Oh, he was certainly a member of the coalition, but there are many others involved. And uh, it was the pharmaceutical industry, the coming up with chemicals rather than plant-based things. It was the uh, chemical factories and this and that, that they understood that hemp feedstocks would be a necessary competitor. But it, it was really the plastics industry. When they figured out in 1935 how to make telephone-grade plastics out of industrial hemp, this stuff had to go. And everybody now points to that development as the one that really pushed them over the edge. DuPont and a company had just spent the family fortune on buying German patents for nylon and rayon and setting up huge factories in the United States and the natural fibers were under attack. So the cloth uh, aspect of hemp was uh, threatened by, du I mean DuPont was threatened by that. And the Not just the cloth aspect of it, but the fact that you had this veritable mill of cellulose in the hemp plant that you could take natural fibers and compete with what they were trying to do chemically was competition for them. Well, uh, Don, in modern day times, uh, the there's been a lot of uh, consciousness raised by people like uh, John Cougar Mellencamp and Willie Nelson about the plight of the farmers. And in my home state, uh, Kentucky, uh, there's a hell of a lot of uh, poor farmers out there, and, and uh, from one year to the next, they're worried worried to death about what's happening with the tobacco uh, crop. and. Uh, it sounds to me like uh, there's potentially a real asset, a real uh, gold mine in a sense, in uh, being able for the farmers to freely, uh, freely uh, raise hemp. Uh, I mean, this seems like a very political issue, you know, to me. And uh, oh, it's I something think you've been involved with, haven't you? Yeah, it's kind of what we're hearing down at this conference in the last few days. Is these politicians learn? politicians learned 20 some years ago that they had to jump up and down about drugs to get elected and, and they're still on that model they haven't learned that they have to jump up and down sensibly now about drugs to stay elected mm -hmm. and uh, th you know there's a tremendous uh, lack of education amongst our congressmen and senators about where the world is changed in the 20 or 30 years since they were elected to these offices. Well, where are we right now in terms of the fight for, for the legalization and the freedom of American farmers to grow hemp? We're on uh, the uh, home plate just trying to get a hit. We are just at the beginning of trying to score anything here. We are So this is, a, this is an started. absolute total suppression of, of hemp. Uh, what, do, what do the American Farmer Associations uh, say about this? I mean, isn't there, oh. an, isn't there an economic incentive in, in uh, their becoming an, uh, the, benefit, the uh, recipients of the uh, fruition of this wonderful uh, plant? I think they're looking to Canada to see if the Canadian farmers make it with hemp. Uh, I see. So anywhere that gets Canadian radio, all the farm bureaus in the northern United States, they've all come up with good hemp resolutions and gotten things passed through their state legislatures. I mean, the fact that North Dakota and Montana and Idaho and all these northern states, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, all have hemp legislation is simply that these farmers up there are listening to what's going on in Canada and understand that there are farmers up there that are doing well, very, well, very well with this crop. Is this the same as with medical, uh, medical marijuana where there's state initiatives or they made a certain amount of progress but the federal government simply uh, overrides the whole thing so it's just something on paper where they really don't have shit? Well our biggest problem with the hemp industry is these continuing threats from the U.S. government. It's not like the government has to really even shut us down you know, every once in a while they seize a load of the stuff and put out publicity about it, or they have this agenda item on the Drug Enforcement Administration's 
agenda that they want to create this new law to keep hemp out of foods, and that should be the Food and Drug Administration's jurisdiction and all that. But just by the government putting out such, you know, premature, you know, negative stuff, it really keeps hemp from taking off as a product. So they're trying to, uh, you know, shoot us down before we even get started. But hemp is now in every health food store. It's going to be in every supermarket. It's going to be in your hardware stores. You're going to see a lot more hemp, and I hope people will uh, take the time to learn about it and study it and use these products and understand this is not the evil weed, but a useful plant that everybody needs. And I thank you for the interview. Thank you. Okay, and uh, we'll let Don go. He has an important uh, lecture to get to, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you soon substances that have a uh, high potential for abuse. Well, does, is recreational use of marijuana abuse? Well, then why is it controlled? Right? Well, uh, because it's a police state. Illegal use now well, constitutes abuse. It's, it's not a police state, right? Uh, the federal government may be beyond redemption. Uh, we may, you know, we may have to win this in all 50 states before the feds ever get around to, to bringing themselves one inch closer to the truth. But the, the federal controls over these substances are mirrored in every state. And each state has separate laws on this stuff, and those laws can be changed. And not only can they be changed by citizen initiatives or by legislatures, in general, the same way that at the federal level, they delegate the authority to the Attorney General, the Surgeon General, the Drug Enforcement Administration, to decide which things go on these lists in the states. This is also delegated to an administrative agency, and it's generally the, the well-known uh, agency, the Board of Pharmacy. Right? And this is five or six or ten pharmacists who sit around and meet, you know, a couple of times a year and uh, decide which pharmacists should be allowed to have licenses and who's prescribing too much of the wrong <coughs> things and should get their license yanked. Well, these guys also have the job of deciding which substances meet the criteria. And, uh, of course, you know, they... They'll take proposals. I, I have read the, the laws in various states, not all of them, but maybe only half a dozen. They'll take proposals in general from anybody to, uh, to re-examine whether something should be on the list. And, of course, whenever the feds decide that something is dangerous and ripe for abuse, like MDMA, they'll go down and recommend that all the states do the same thing. But you would think among the 50 states, there ought to be five or ten at least, where there are honest citizens, you know, doctors, pharmacists, etc., sitting on these boards who could actually take a semi-objective look at the criteria and say, you know, these kids going out and, uh, and dancing all night on this, is that abuse? You know, these people who smoke marijuana, to, uh, to remedy their medical conditions or just because they like the results. Is that abuse? Maybe these substances don't belong on here. And I think we should all go back to our own locations and start making those cases because it's only a police state to the extent that you let them run it. If you go up and, and challenge the lies, then at at least they have to lie in front of the public. They, you know, instead of just quietly passing this stuff in a back room somewhere, they have to, it'll be on the record that 10 people came in and said, here's the truth, here's the citations, here's the scientific literature, here's the sociological results.